Hi, everybody. Welcome. So glad that you could join us today. I'm really thrilled to be with Aaron Barnhart with the Norman Regionals Health Foundation. As you probably already know, the Chamber, the Foundation, and Cleveland County, we've been partnering together to, to acquire critical needs that our healthcare professionals have. We're in the middle of this global pandemic. Everybody has needs all around the world for personal protective equipment. And uh, we decided not too long ago that Norman has a history of stepping up and taking care of ourselves. And so we wanted to start partnering together uh, to spread the word and hopefully access supplies and resources that we know are throughout our community and they can be deployed to help out our friends, our neighbors, and our family members. So Aaron, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, you are uh, joining us, are you at the hospital? Is that right? I am, yes. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for having me um, on this morning. Yes, so I am here at uh, Norman Regional at the Porter campus this morning. Very good. Well, let's get into it. Uh, tell me about this partnership that we've created and, and some of the needs that are out there. Great, sure. So we are just really grateful um, for the partnership with the Chamber and Cleveland County. We have such a generous community and they really are, are reaching out and want to get involved. So having this partnership has enabled us to reach, you know, thousands throughout our community here. Now, I know everybody is looking to help out, and it's, it's hard when you're, you know, stuck at home, you're, a lot of, many of us, like myself, we're, we're working remotely, and we're trying to follow the, those stay-at-home guidelines, and be safe, but we still want to be part of the solution, and, and at times you feel a little hamstrung, you're like, well, what can I do? Uh, so what are, what are the, some, some of the things that people like me or, or other folks that find themselves working remotely, what can they do to help out right now? Well, definitely we have several avenues. Um, those who, who are at home and like to sew, we have cloth masks and those um, items. We have, um, if you have, if you're in a business that you perhaps uh, use an N95 mask, then we are in desperate need of those, um, or financial contributions because um, supplies are very limited and the health system can, you know, use those funds that are donated through the foundation to purchase the equipment that's needed. Now, you mentioned earlier you're at the hospital, and so somebody might assume that um, you'd want these items delivered to the hospital, but that's not the case, right? That is not the case. So starting this past Monday, um, we were just so grateful for this partnership that Cleveland County um, offered the fairgrounds. So the fairgrounds on Robinson, they are open, so they are now our our drop-off point for donated goods, donated items, um, can be dropped off Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 3 and 5 p.m. That's, uh, I believe, uh, on the, that's the county grounds north side of Robinson, and it's, um, I think, back behind near the arena is the actual drop-off. Is that, is that right, or they're off? That's that's correct. So you have the main building on, on, on Robinson and it's the second building behind. They have, they're marked off. There's orange cones and signage. You don't have to get out of your car. You just drive up. Um, they are asking for your contact information, mainly so we can thank everyone um, after, after this is over. Perfect. Okay, so we've got the location and those days were Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 3 to 5 the fairgrounds, really easy to find and get to, um, and then they're there to help, so you don't really even have to get out of your car, you know, unless you just absolutely want to, but, so, you mentioned a few items before, but uh, on your website and on the Chamber's website, which our, our website is normanchamber.com, what's the foundation's website? The foundation is nrhfoundation.org. Okay, so on both of our websites, there's a list of items and there's the, the list is evolving uh, but there are some some top needs 
you already mentioned the N95 mask, which seems to be the, the most important need right now. But what are they, can you tell us a few of the other of those kind of top two to five needs that are there? Sure, sure. Well, I, th I think right now we have a list of 11 or 12 items and actually we just received a, a change today. So that will be um, reducing, which is a great thing. But I don't think our top three needs are going to change. So those are the uh, PAPR hoods, the, the KN95 masks that we talked about, and then the um, there's N95 masks and KN95 masks. So I'm learning a lot about masks. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and surgical and isolation masks as well. So those are the needs. Um, I don't see those needs changing at all. Um, so... And that's something really that the supply is very limited. So um, if you really, if you already have them on hand, that's ideal. That's really what, what we're looking for because the supply is limited. If, if you go online to a home improvement store, you'll be able to pull, oh, you know, search for the N95 mask, but they're going to be out of stock. So um, that's why really we have suppliers that we have vetted and we know who to work through. So that's why the financial contributions are important. Um, we have had several you know, generous donors. They're, they've contacted us, they've ordered items online, they've paid up front, and there's no product that's delivered. So we really don't want people to go down that avenue. So people can go to your website then, the foundation's website. You can make an online donation and uh, you make sure that those funds then are used to purchase the, the proper kinds of equipment, right? Exactly, exactly. So on our, you can click our donate button on our, on our homepage and um, there's a portion where you can designate funds to CARE 2020. We have a text to give option. So you can text NRHF CARE uh, to 41444 and that is the same same platform. Perfect. So if you don't have any of these items sitting around, which which there's kind of two opportunities here. One is your, um, whether it be your home or your business, you have a uh, a large supply or a small supply of any of these items that could be sitting on a shelf in a closet or something of that nature. And those are certainly welcome to be donated. We love to have those. You can drop those off. Monday, Wednesday, Friday from three to five at the fairgrounds. Or if you don't have those items, uh, you can then go make the donation and the foundation will ensure that those items are purchased. So two different options, I guess. Correct. Correct. Now, uh, we talked earlier about maybe the, the do-it-yourself projects and there's been a lot of information about, oh, they're needed, they're not needed. Uh, but there actually is a, a lot of homemade do-it-yourself items that, that are needed, right? Correct, correct. The, the cloth mask, so our original request two weeks ago was um, for 3,500 masks, and there is a large community out there sewing these masks for us, and, and we greatly appreciate that. On the Norman Regional Health System website, on your website, and on the foundation, we, ha we have the patterns. These patterns are approved through the CDC and through uh, the World Health Organization. So please follow those patterns. Um, but now the need has increased and we are looking for 10,000 masks. Um, so that's, it's, it's, a bit of, it's a bit of a jump. I think we've collected around 1,300 cloth masks right now. So um, please continue on to, to sew those masks. I know elastic, we've heard that elastic is getting difficult to find, but hopefully, um, you know, people are, are being very creative um, with cloth strips and headbands and other things of that nature. But, um, and really the need has increased because we are, we are providing these cloth masks to our patients in our emergency departments and at our clinics who um, are presenting symptoms. And then the uh, n another one, another item that that uh, people are able to make from home are the the plastic face shields. Is that right? That's correct. So it's through. Um, there's there's really two masks. So there's one that's with a 3D printer. 
So the headpiece is 3D printed, um, and then there's a, a plastic piece that's the face shield. So we have a group, um, you know, that's on our website. We have somebody kind of coordinating all of that because they're they're talking to the to the people, so they understand there's a specific pattern that has evolved. Um, one of our our local physicians, his son has. Um, really evolved the pattern and so it's not your typical one that anybody can just find online so so we have we have a great partnership with the um, Norman Public Library they're helping print the 3d pieces and so if you have the filament or the specific plastic those items are desperately needed um, as well to continue this the production perfect so you're not um, anticipating people having to, you know, that everybody has a 3D printer at home. That's not the case. You're more looking for the supplies that can be donated and then uh, put together by some other folks, right? That's correct. That's correct. I think we have enough. We enough. We have enough people producing them. We're just looking for the the products now. Okay. Great. Is there anything else that people need to be thinking about? Maybe they could be making or helping out. On? We, we do have a pattern for a vinyl shield, and we have that on our website, so, so that's out there. It's made with, um, it's, a, it's a foam piece, elastic, you know, headband across, and then um, a, a plastic shield, a vinyl, vinyl, clear vinyl shield as well. So that pattern is on, is, is on our websites. Okay, very good. Yeah, so for, again, for all of those details, our websites uh, we have links for not only the financial donations but a uh, list of needs that are there so you can go look in your closet or on the warehouse shelf and see if you have any of those items you can donate them or any of the items that we've talked about that you can make there's online links with designs and patterns so it's all there for people to access and I know uh, I think Wheels on Wheels is also looking for drivers is that are you aware of that? They are looking for drivers. So what um, I know they have certain restrictions, you, you know, you can't have traveled out of, um, I believe out of the state in the last two weeks. So there's certain restrictions. Um, I, there, there's a phone number to call um, on Meals on Wheels on our, on our websites. So, so reach out to them. I think the, they are kind of calling daily to see the numbers needed for drivers. So if you have that, um, opportunity and you have that time, that would be a great avenue to go down as well to, to help out. That's a fairly long-standing partnership between the hospital and, and Meals on Wheels. You guys help meals and then other folks make sure they get in the hands of the, the folks that need it, right? Correct, correct. It's it's thousands of meals that are that are prepared here and then distributed out through the community. Awesome, okay. Right. Well, is there anything else that we need to let people know about before we wrap up this conversation? Just a few things. So um, if you want to support our local restaurants, we have had generous donations of meals and snacks, and it's just very welcoming. You know, some of our um, frontline caregivers, when, when they get on the floor, they don't leave until the end of their shift. So providing them with, with a warm meal, um, you know, I'll tell you a quick story. We had we had a generous donation of coffee from from one of our um, local businesses, and they had they wrote inspirational notes on the cartons, and we took them up to the to the floor, and it was you know probably around seven o'clock at night, just the beginning of their shift, the night shift, and um, they read the notes and they were just so excited to receive the coffee, and, and some of them started crying. And I was like, it's such a, it's such a simple gift. I mean, it was an amazing gift and it meant so much to them truly. So, um, I was thinking about, you know, what, what more can we do? So we, through the foundation, um, gift cards are great. If you want to support your local restaurant, you know, provide those, you can drop those in the mail, um, to us and we can kind of share kind of spread the love throughout the health system, make sure everyone's taken care of. But um, so that's one one way that, that we're asking the community to help as well. 
Um, and then another way, so we created something just to make everybody smile and kind of put the, get the word out about staying home and washing your hands and social distancing. So if you've been on social media, I know you took the challenge, the wash your hands, Oklahoma. Um, so, you know, I would just ask anybody, you don't need to be challenged, just create your own video, post it um, on your Facebook page, on Instagram or Twitter. It's just something that um, is a little light and can bring, can bring a smile to, to someone's face during this time. Yeah, my family had, had a lot of fun with that exercise. That was good. I love this idea about the gift cards because I know people are also looking for opportunities to support our local businesses and encouraging them to either uh, take advantage of curbside, drive through or deliveries, or purchase a gift card that could be potentially be used on down the road. But here's another way to give it, you know, pay it forward. You can buy a gift card to a local restaurant and uh, forward that on to the to you guys at the foundation. You'll take that and then uh, help spread the love amongst all of our healers at the hospital. So that's great. Exactly, exactly. I mean, we really would prefer that over. Um, we have we you know our community. They are they're very generous, but be showing up with meals um, at the emergency department is probably not the best. Um, best way to go. So we're really trying to coordinate, coordinate those meals and coordinate those efforts. And again, we've probably had over 30 different restaurants and um, just donors who wanted to reach out with food and have coordinated that effort um, through our staff here at the foundation. Now, I think I've read in the paper some other amazing um, contributions from businesses that have happened. I mean, it happens all the time, but particularly during this crisis, you want to share with us about some of those? Certainly, we received um, just a generous gift from Hitachi yesterday, and that financial contribution will enable us to purchase the critical PPE um, that we need, and it's going to save lives. So, you know, I know um, some of our businesses, the, they're struggling right now, but if there's, you know, any contribution at this point in time, it's is going to make a difference and it will change lives and it everything that's going to our care 2020 fund is going to go toward our ppe purchases so when you go online and make the donation you should, you can designate that care 2020 fund right correct correct okay great so there's lots of opportunities for people uh do you want to work with your hands and sew something at home if you have something you know, that you can donate, fantastic. Or if you don't, and you, and you just want to give out of goodness of your heart and make a contribution, there's opportunities for that. But I think there's a myriad of ways for all of us to be able to contribute and, and give back. Definitely, definitely, yes. Well, I, I've got to tell you, I, I think about our healthcare providers right now, uh, they're kind of on the front lines of the battle that we're in. And, uh, my my family were holed up at home. I can't imagine what it's like uh, to be any part of the health delivery system um, from the physician on down to the person who is ensuring that things are sanitized and that kind of thing. Um, all of them are, you know, putting their own health and safety at risk. Um, and so what tremendous individuals and we, we all can't say thank you enough to those folks. Well, it's been really just amazing to see everyone come together at the health system um, because it is, like you said, it's, it's taking every single person um, just to, just to get through this and this pandemic it's, it's ever changing. So every day there's going to be something, something different. And you just, we just have to be flexible at this time and, and understand. And, you know, through these partnerships, uh, which we're grateful for, we will, we will get through this together. Absolutely. Well, then we encourage people again to uh, continue to look back often on our websites. Uh, as Aaron just mentioned, things are evolving and changing quickly. And so the need today may be different from the day, need tomorrow. So just stay tuned and, and stay uh, connected.
to what's out there, whether it be on our websites or social media. Uh, we're both updating those communication chains regularly, and we, we want to keep people informed about what's going on. So, well, Aaron, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it, and I'm really thrilled that uh, the hospital, the county, and the chamber has been able to connect and partner together uh, to be part of the solution uh, to, the, to the challenges that, that we're faced with today. Yes, thank you, Scott. We appreciate it. We appreciate your support and getting the message out uh, in collaboration with us. We, we truly appreciate it. Okay, well, thanks for the conversation. Uh, stay healthy and be well. Thanks, you too. You and your thanks. family, wishing you the best. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you.